Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Tyco Mantua 040 diecast steam locomotive. Basically, a buddy of mine was walking through a train store and he found this thing being sold in non-working condition for either five or seven Canadian dollars. So he ended up buying it on my behalf and then I just paid him back for it. And uh, overall, it seemed like a pretty good deal. It's obviously uh, going to need some work. I haven't uh, tested this locomotive whatsoever, so I don't know what the condition of the drive is, but just from looking at it, you know, you can see it's missing a truck. The wheels are pretty heavily oxidized. I think there's a chance the drive might be seized due to old lubricants. So it's definitely gonna need a little TLC before it can be riding the rails once again. But luckily these uh, Tyco Manua drives tend to be pretty simple, so they're quite robust. So I think it's got a pretty good shot at running once again. Anyway, let's begin. Let's take it over to the track and see if we can figure out what's going on with this locomotive and then go from there. It's amazing how much information you can get from just doing a basic track test and uh, we're going to be able to figure out what exactly we're working with in just a second here. So we'll give it some power and uh, what we see right off the bat is no current draw, which would mean this thing isn't picking up power. But due to the wheels, I think that might just be because they're dirty. So let's try jiggling it a bit. And we have high current draw and you can actually hear that. I'm gonna shut the power off so I don't burn out the motor. Um, but that's actually not a bad sign. The drive is seized because it's not turning, but the motor is getting power since we can hear it. So uh, we know there isn't an electrical issue, but we do know that there is likely a mechanical one. So let's bring it back over to the workbench and see if we can figure out what exactly is going on with it. So on most older steam locomotives, there is usually one major screw towards the front of the locomotive, which holds most of it together. I believe it's this screw right here, so we're gonna remove that. You always have to be careful removing this screw because uh, once you do, uh, usually the uh, piece for the uh, cylinders and the valves uh, becomes loose and if you pull it out getting all those parts back in on either side can be a little bit tricky So it's something you want to avoid but We have to get inside this thing either way. So it's a risk. We're gonna have to be willing to take and That didn't seem to do too much. So I think I'm gonna try removing this screw right here You can see there are a couple screws here, but I believe those are just for this uh, plate right here so I don't think we need to remove those at least not right away probably open that area up later just to uh, lubricate everything but for now it should be okay I'm just gonna grab a different screwdriver because this screw is being kind of stubborn Let's see if this makes a difference ah, a piece of cake All right, there we go. We can now uh, see inside the drive and uh, it does seem to be turning interestingly enough. I'm kind of surprised, but uh, there's a lot of crap in here. I mean, look at all this uh, little dust in here. Certainly really not the type of thing you want to find and there's a little bit wound around uh, these components, but yeah, I just find it funny that this is turning okay because, you know, we heard sound from the motor, but um, usually that would mean it was kind of locked in place. So I don't know, maybe we should try putting some power directly on the uh, leads of the motor and see if we can get it turning. What do you think, folks? Is it going to turn over? Let's hold those uh, wires on there and see if we can get it cranking. Yeah, it is turning. It's just not going terribly quick. So that's all very strange. I did just notice though, you can see this wire is quite frayed and maybe it's possible this has found its way, you know, in between the armature and the shell and it's rubbing against that, locking the motor in place. I don't know. Either way, the motor seems really weak. I mean, I was giving it uh, full power there, which with this controller would be about 14 volts and it's hardly turning. So there's definitely something up with it. So let's investigate further. I guess the best thing to do would probably just be to uh, remove the brushes on the motor and then we can uh, service it and we can uh, actually check out to, s you know, check to see how everything else is looking. We'll just uh, clean the gaps on the motor. They look okay, which is the strange thing. On, on a lot of these motors, this will be 
uh, a source of problems because uh, as carbon gets in here it can actually short the commutator out and it will start burning and uh, the motor will use a lot of power but uh, yeah as I said in this case it doesn't appear to be the issue so it's quite confusing and we'll clean this up while we're in here with a fiberglass pencil All right, let's see if that made any difference. Well, I've been playing around with the motor to try to get it working properly, and I noticed uh, just from trying to turn it manually that it uh, now hardly wants to turn. So I don't know what changed with the drive, but uh, there's clearly something off with it. So we're gonna crack it open and maybe just give it some oil, clean everything up a little bit, and hopefully that will uh, get everything turning properly. Cause I think at this point the motor is okay, or at least I hope it's okay, but uh, there's something not quite right. So we'll see if we can fix, fix whatever's going on with the drive. Well, I mean, there's like a little bit of oil in here and everything, but that's nothing bad really it's just a little bit of dirt I've seen way worse just gonna take a q-tip here with some 90% uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and we'll just clean off all of the oil and carbon whatever crap is in here yeah I mean, I mean there's a bit coming off it's it's not completely clean but like I said I've seen far worse it's already looking a little bit better I'll just get everything back into place and add some oil. We'll seal that back up. We'll also oil the drivers and all the other components because those could be uh, sources of issues too. Let's put a little there, there. Pretty much if you've got a moving part, Put a little bit of oil on it. Probably will not hurt. Except the commutator. <laughs> I think I might have just noticed what the problem might be. You can see uh, this rail, which uh, part of the driver rides on there, is bent out of place. So this might have been dropped or something. And if it's not straight, it's not going to move so well, so I think we need to bend that back into place. I wonder what the best way to do so would be. Yeah, you can uh, see right here this component. That should be straight. It should look the same as this. So that is way off. Well, that so far is already looking a lot better in my opinion, but the proof's in the pudding. Let's uh, see how it all turns over. That seems fine. Now let's test that motor again. Oh, yeah. Well, we've certainly gotten somewhere. Doesn't sound great, but I think that's just due to a lack of oil. I also might not have tightened these screws down quite enough because it kind of looks like this is slipping, so we'll have to investigate that a little further, but it's way better than what we started with, so that's good. Now I'm going to uh, soak this piece of fabric back here with oil. That will feed down to uh, this bearing, and then we'll just put a little bit of oil here, which will soak into uh, the bearing on the opposite side for the motor. Put a healthy amount of oil over this. I might add a bit of grease, but luckily we're dealing with nylon parts, so the friction is pretty minimal. Let's help everything kind of work its way in. Yeah, listen to how much healthier that already sounds. Yeah, it's certainly not perfect, you know, the revs aren't consistent, but uh, this is a solid step in the right direction. The truth is, too, some of these drives, you know, you can't get them working perfectly. Uh, somebody who I guess used to work for Tyco Mantua, they were commenting on one of my videos that uh, 
there are these uh, little uh, washers which uh, act as sort of like a, a bearing. They're there to reduce friction and apparently over time those disintegrate and once they do, uh, the motor turns better in one direction than the other because there's more pressure on one of them. So some of these old Tyco Mantuas run better backwards than they do forwards and apparently that's why. So hopefully this one uh, still has that little washer in place but there's a solid chance that it's unfortunately gone. It's still going to run though. I'm going to try to make sure that when we uh, put this whole drive back together uh, that this wire is in a good position too. So hopefully it doesn't rub up against the armature. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of surprised they would build it this way. I'll put a little bit of grease. Like I said, I don't think this thing needs a crazy amount. But a little bit will not hurt it. Especially if we mix it in with some oil here. All right, that seems pretty good. I think that that is everything we need to do while we have the drive open so we can uh, seal it back up and uh, do some work on a couple of the other components on the engine. See the wires feeding in over the top of the motor, which is exactly where I want it. I'll just put the uh, long screw back in. I'm also going to uh, just loosen these up, see if we can get this plate into a bit of a better position. It's always good to get all your screws in place and then uh, slowly tighten them down. And uh, you also, you know, you need these screws to be torqued enough that, uh, you know, they're going to hold this plate down properly, obviously, and they're not going to fall out. But uh, you're working with a very soft metal here, so always be very gentle with them because it's certainly not hard to uh, strip the threads. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, we seem to have this whole thing back together. Why don't we apply a little bit of power just to make sure it's all working properly before we continue? And then we'll go from there. And of course, you can always apply power to the two grounds, which in this case is the uh, tender and the entire locomotive. So I'm going to put a wire on there and uh, basically any part of metal on the locomotive. And uh, that all seems to be running fine. So I guess we'll start working on some other things. I want to attend to the wheels. And uh, we also need to find a rear truck for this tender. So uh, yeah, I'll have to, I guess, go looking through my spare parts bin. Got part of a track cleaner here, so I'm just going to apply some power and uh, basically let the wheels clean themselves. Well, I'd say those are looking a little better. I just need to do the uh, ones on the uh, truck here. Well, I went digging through my spare parts bin and lo and behold, I think I found a replacement for our rear truck here. I went ahead and already cleaned up the wheels, so we're gonna try to install this thing. I also uh, found a screw, which I think will uh, thread properly. It's self-tapping, so I think it's the right size. I don't know. We'll have to find out now. Well, I think that's about as close as we're going to get to perfect in this case. I'll put some oil in the uh, bearings and then I think this thing is good to go for a track run. All right, let's take her to the track. Well, moment of truth here, everyone. Yeah, I think it's gonna start. I think it's kind of promising 
because of that bench test, but of course things can always be different in reality. I don't know. Let's try running it. Hmm. Same thing as before, that's weird. Oh. All right. And now it goes both directions. Very mysterious, but she is a runner. Look at that. Fantastic. Eh, current draw is a little higher than uh, to be desired, but uh, you know what? It's fine. It all seems to be uh, running pretty well. Let's see if we got a decent low speed. I actually just lost it, I think. Yeah, okay. Low speed's not so great, but you know what? Overall, I'm very happy with this engine. You know, it was a, a $5 locomotive, and uh, it didn't really take too much to get it going again, so really no complaints there, and it doesn't seem to be uh, running too poorly either, so yeah. Overall, a good little project. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.